this is 101 on Plus TV Africa. I'm Elsa Godwin. On this episode, we'll be chatting with leading ladies in tech as we look at the inclusion and role of women in the industry. Joining me virtually is a software developer and the founder of She Code Africa, Ada Ntuka Oyom. Her expertise has earned her roles in several top organizations globally, including her current engagement as the ecosystem community manager for Sub-Saharan Africa at Google. Ada has been awarded as one of White Tech 100 honorees by the Future Awards Africa 2019 and Top 50 Tech Women of Lagos by Tech Cabal. Hello, Ada. Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? Fine, thank you as well. Okay, so in a tweet you put out in December 2019, you said you recognized that a lot of tech companies within Africa and, of course, beyond are trying to improve their um, developer relations, but they're doing it wrongly or yieldingly to help us understand what developer relations mean in this contest. Okay, so developer relations... Um popularly known as DevRel, um, is basically creating some sort of relationship with members of the developer community. And members of the developer community could be anyone who identifies as with any role in tech, either uh, as a software developer, as a product designer, product manager, engineering manager, there's several vast roles. And what um, DevRel Experts or anyone who is into um, DevRel, what we do is try to bridge the gap between um, tech companies and their products and the developer community. So what we also try to do is make sure that these products um, from the different companies, dependent on the company that you're in, what we try to do is make sure that these products integrate well with the developers and not just pushing it out there for developers to know that they're aware, to make them aware of this product, but to also make sure that they're satisfied with using these products um, and also to enable the growth of um, members of this um, developer community. That's like the basic explanation of developer relations. Hmm. So why do they seem to be getting it wrong or yielding little? So firstly... Um, just like I explained what DevRel, uh, the basic uh, meaning of DevRel, what uh, tech in Africa is, tech is currently growing. I mean, we're not where other continents are currently, but we're, uh, we're growing and we're growing really fast. And what many Nigerian and many African tech companies know as their own form of marketing is the traditional method, the traditional form of uh, marketing. I, I'm not a marketing expert. I don't understand. Um, I'm not really in-depth into that. So I won't really talk about that. But that's a mistake many companies within Africa make is thinking that developers would also respond um, positively to the traditional form of marketing, to the way they would market their products or whatever it is they're building to the average um, person out there. Now, developers, naturally, we don't like the traditional form of marketing. We see that as boring because... We say that you cannot relate to what it is that we are doing. You can't relate to our field because you have no idea what our field is. So what um, DevRel experts then do is come in as the middleman and say, oh, we are technical experts. Um, we have an idea because we are also software developers. We, we have a technical background and we also have a flair for pushing out uh, products. We also have a flair for speaking to people like you who are also developers about products. And basically that's what DevRel is. And just like you said, according to what I said, is that many companies still don't see the need in doing that. They think, oh, what DevRel is, is just to go talk at, uh, go talk at events, speak at conferences, and then that's the end. But what we really do is make sure that the developers relate well with us, which is where the relations comes in. Developers relate well with us, and we use the well-known methods that they can um, relate to, to make sure that they integrate your products or your APIs or whatever tools it is that you're building. And then it doesn't just stop at marketing. Um, that's helping them integrate the products. It also works well with supporting them. When they have issues, we know how to tackle those issues for them. When we go to talk at conferences about your product, whatever it is. Um, say, for example, I currently work at Google, and we say one of the attendees of the event has an issue with a product that I am attached to as a DevRel expert. 
it's easy for me to help out. It's easy for me. And if it's a technical issue, it's easy for me to help out. It's easy for me to help you tackle that issue because I have technical knowledge of that product. I have technical knowledge of helping integrate that product. So yeah, so that's what DevRel does. It's, so it's way more possible. than just the age-old marketer. Is it possible to have some form of synergy between um, the regular marketing and then the devil and uh, marketing so that um, one is not necessarily being left behind? So um, devil involves several aspects. It's like uh, an umbrella divided into several smaller groups. And yes, marketing definitely comes into uh, the devil or developer relations umbrella. So yes, whoever's working in the devil um, unit of any company gets to interface with um, the marketing unit or the marketing team of that um, just in that organization. That's the only way it will work because you bring they bring their traditional methods, you bring your own technical expertise, and then they fuse it together as one. Okay, so how would you rate Sub-Saharan Africa developer relations strategy? Well, currently... Um, so I don't want to be biased because of my current experience at Google, but overall, I would say it's it's still poor. It's still really poor. There are several companies that um, haven't integrated or haven't seen the need or are still in doubt as to how they can utilize um, developer relations. Many companies think they have to be really big before they get a DevRel team to come in. And so on a scale of one to 10, I would say DevRel in um, Sub-Saharan Africa or SSA is still at a three to four. So how is this playing out and how do you see it playing out in light of the pandemic and going forward? Um, do you mind rephrasing your question? I didn't get that correctly. There's already an issue when it comes to DevRel marketing and you think they are not doing enough for getting um, little results for whatever effort they are being they are putting into it. So in light of coronavirus pandemic and moving forward, I mean, there's been a lot of changes in the dynamics of running almost every form of business. How do you see it playing out for now and going forward? So currently it's, um, it's a bit tricky because first things first, um, this COVID-19 pandemic is literally new. No one has any idea um, or any previous knowledge about it. I mean, everybody's still trying to find a way to come around with it. And it's the same thing in DevRel. And then if you bring it down to SSA as well, which is Southern Africa as well, if you bring it down here, while we're still struggling to make a more standard, uh, make DevRel a more standard practice here, it's like double blow for us because then with the whole era of everyone switching to online events, we have to look for ways to be able to support these developers. We have to look for ways to, be able to support the, um, several developer communities to ensure that one, they don't lose track of um, the vibe, they don't lose track of um, the skills, they don't lose track of the knowledge in utilizing the different products or even staying abreast of things that are happening within Kek. So, I, it's really tricky right now, but I think it's making a defining stance in the sense that um, with everyone switching to online events, um, with everyone switching to digital activities, remote work, things like that, I think after, I mean, post-COVID-19, nobody knows when it's going to end, but post-COVID-19, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of improvements in the sense that um, it won't just be restricted to a particular region. Um, and also there would be more better practices. People would have a lot more knowledge on how to utilize or how to implement uh, online activities or online tools that would help um, improve the lives of developers. Hmm. Let's talk about your foundation, She Code Africa. Um, it has impacted over 2,500 women across um, 15 African countries. Um, it also seems like the conversation has gone beyond getting girls and women interested and into tech to creating an environment that would see more women taking on managerial position in the tech industry. Now, how is She Code Africa imbibing this concern into its goal of empowering young girls? Okay, so firstly, um, She Code Africa SEA. Um, our goal is to make um, women more visible across different levels and career roles in technology. So what this means is while we're also working with 
in bringing people into tech, that is young girls and women into tech. We are also making sure that those who are currently into tech, we're trying to make sure that we help them advance as much as possible to the furthest heights of their career. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so in your position, um, you probably get to see cool applications or tech products before we get to see them. So what unique ideas has um, this pandemic generated so far? Um, there's several, one of them, there's several, like a lot, but I think my favorite so far would be um, the numerous COVID-19 trackers that people are um, working on. So basically to track the different states or countries or locations where um, the pandemic is currently being experienced and the level of the pandemic, if it's really, if it's still mild or it's really intense, things like that. I mean, even at Chicot Africa, we're currently using one of them. We're using the APIs for our assessment, um, for our assessment program on our mentorship program. And I think another one, this is, isn't really a tool, a particular tool per se. It's more of an initiative where, um, and that's the whole idea of digital events, where people are transforming their offline events that would normally um, be offline to digital events. We've seen digital concerts. I mean, even at Google, we're currently um, doing the whole um, stay home concert. Uh, and also the events aspect as well, people using different platforms. I mean, who would have thought that you could hold a live conference on Instagram? No one would have thought about that. I mean, people are using different tools. There's Google Meet, there's Skype, there's Zoom, holding different conferences. And then now it's no more a thing of being um, bounded by regions. You can literally pop in and speak at a conference in Italy. Um, someone in the U.S. can speak at a conference here in Nigeria. That's, I, I think, it's one of the um, innovative ideas that I have seen being utilized this period. Okay, so there are sectors that are largely affected at the moment, while some others are not necessarily deep in the waters. Um, the pandemic has um, seen the rise of many tech products. What does this say for the future of tech in Africa? A whole lot is going to change. A whole lot. Um, I've given a few talks uh, regarding how I think post-COVID-19 would be in um, in Africa, in the tech sector, and a whole lot of things are going to change. Firstly, we're already seeing companies um, pivoting to remote uh, lifestyle, work lifestyle for employees, I mean, full-time remote. We're seeing companies who would never put in the option of remote um, switch into that. And I think post-COVID-19, a lot of companies are going to see the benefits in having a remote lifestyle for their um, employees and they're going to utilize that. And also a lot of event organizers, a lot of community builders are going to see the benefits and the less haggle in creating offline events rather than instead of creating online events. And they're going to switch to online events. We're going to see more online events more than offline events. So those two things, and I think the last one would be is that there's going to be a larger influx because unfortunately, as people are being laid down, even in tech during this period, it's going to be the same thing post COVID-19 because people are currently trying to gain more expertise. People are trying to use the stay home um, or the lockdown, depending on whatever location they are. People are trying to use this opportunity to improve on their skills. And I think post COVID-19, there's going to be um, a large attraction in terms of job opportunities and people wanting to come into tech. So yeah, those mm. three things. Finally, before I let you go, what role will developers like yourself have to play in encouraging diversity and inclusion um, in work environment? Oh, it's as simple as possible. Um, if you work in a company where the policies do not favor um, a um, diversity in terms of gender or in terms of pay, it's as simple as speaking up for it. That's the very, that's the, like the basic, the most basic thing you can do, speaking up for it. And if you're lucky enough to be in a company where they have um, policies that encourage things like that, it now boils down to you as an individual to ensure that your colleagues and you yourself keep up to those policies. And then for ladies who are developers in these companies, it's all about showing up. I mean, companies, other individuals will do as much as they can do to make this, um, to make 
the situation or to make the environment as equal as possible. But if you don't show up, if you don't speak up, if you don't put in efforts, it's it's not going to be it's not going to work out. So, yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Ada. My pleasure. It's time for a quick break, but when we return, another leading woman in tech will be joining us to discuss more.